Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. It's a new year, 2008, and we're delighted that you can be with us for a fast-paced half hour of conversation on local issues. Joining me today is our daunty band of daunty, daunty. daunting daunty. band, daunty. daunting of band of, <laughs> okay. of of commentators. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ken Risto, social studies king for the Sheboygan Area School District. Tom Paneski standing in for Lee Sherman Dreyfus today. <laughs> <laughs> and Cal Potter, a former that. state senator. Um, we have a fair amount to talk about. Uh, it's a new year. It's a political. It's a political time uh, for nonpartisan elections in um, in the city and the county uh, and the state, as a matter of fact. And because, national, really, because our Plymouth. our primary for local elections will That's also true. be the presidential primary That's in true. the state. That's true. Although February we are going to have 19th. not too many primaries going on, but in any event. Plymouth has a mayoral election, too. And we could just say right off the bat that uh, Plymouth is uh, certainly an interesting political climate with four people uh, mm. running for mayor. Uh, mayor Pullman, um, who was certainly a newcomer and I think represented some change uh, in the Plymouth area. And maybe like Mayor Perez, that kind of change wasn't mm -hmm. as welcome as it could be by the people who uh, um, weren't as changeable. I don't know, but uh, in any event, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and I don't even know who's running other than uh, Jim Flanagan, longtime uh, alderman out there. Peter Elric, council member, giving up his seat to run for mayor. Oh, is that right? Yes. And Dale Nidal. Right. He's also, I believe, on the city council. On the city council, yeah. Okay, all right. And it'll be interesting as our time goes on to see who jumps in the race for, for mayor in, in the city of Sheboygan, although that's a year away, so. Uh, oh. But a lot of gossip around that. Oh, I know. Speculation. I, know. <laughs> I think everybody except Miss Manners is running for mayor <laughs> of the city of Sheboygan, but uh, in any event, I'm partial to the name Flanagan, having been my mother's name and my son's middle name, so in any event, uh, but uh, we think. She's uh, real issue oriented, isn't she? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Actually, I think, mayor, <laughs> I think Mayor Pullman has done a, a nice job from, from what I'm able to, to determine. Um, getting a little bit more local, uh, the uh, city council races are in place. Um, the Sheboygan Press is lamenting, oh, I'm sorry, I thought I poked you. Um, uh, the um, Sheboygan Press is lamenting uh, the lack of contested races. Uh, in fact, it appears that Gene Kittleson's race is the only one that is being challenged, um, or the only race where there will actually be an election. And uh, Isn't the first district have a race, or did somebody drop out? That's true. Um, there are two people running. Um, uh, Richard Manny is not running for re-election, so it's not an incumbent versus uh, a challenger, but it's Ed Surick, as I understand Dan. it, and uh, who is the former HR director for the city, and Daniel Hill. Daniel Hill, I don't know. Does anybody know Daniel that's, Hill? That's your My district, district so you're gonna, know, yeah. you're gonna figure out all that stuff. I'll, yep. Wait till they come to your door. Come to the door and I'll invite them in. And there we let's go. Let's talk politics. There we go. <laughs> Bob uh, uh, Ryan has no opposition. Jim Bourne has no opposition. Um, um, Mark Hanna has no opposition. Gene Clyunis has no, no opposition. opposition. So, uh, and I think that's not as unusual as people may have thought. It's just in the last few years, uh, there have been a lot of races yes. and, and a lot of contests. My own theory is that the city council is spun into such disruption. It's kind of like the school board used to be years ago. You'd have to be crazy to run. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't mean to be rude about this, but you say the wrong thing and there's a John Doe investigation being conducted by the district attorney. There's an ethics investigation being conducted by the city council. Um, the police department does hours long investigation and these are all based on People being kind of rude to each other, which is certainly not a thing that we should we should uh, uh, approve of. But and who says what to whom? I With know. an earshot becomes an issue, and people say, "I don't need that in my life." I, I can see why there aren't very few people running. Mm -hmm. I think people are just saying, "I don't need that in my life." I think people are willing to serve, but they find maybe more satisfaction out of security they have is running for a church council or something else rather than the, the city council where you're under the microscope or in the spotlight. And not always fairly from, from what I've been able to determine. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, there does seem to be some civility missing. 
but even given that, um, a whole lot seems to be made of this certain lack yeah. of civility or some of it might be due to the news media today. Everybody wants to be the Washington Post and expose the Watergate scandal. You know, you read back uh, in politics of the past, uh, they didn't even mention whether somebody had an affair or whatever they did uh, under their own time because it was sort of given that uh, that's not part of the political arena. But today, I think everything seems to be uh, under the, the watchful eye of the, of the media and maybe reporters don't say, well, maybe that isn't worthy of of print or airtime, they just put it out there just because it's a very competitive media today. I don't know. I, it, a couple of years ago or three or four years ago, we had a large number of people running, a uh, lot of interest, uh, three or four candidates, and uh, I think this is a cycle. You just go, it's great interest, a lot of candidates mm. run, the, some win, some lose, they don't run again, and then there might be a lull. And then maybe at the mayoral election or shortly, you know, there'll be another group of uh, people running again. I, it could be just a lull. It could be. They're all waiting for the mayor's race. They're all <laughs> waiting for the mayor's race. Uh, but it's not, uh, we do have a, a, a f some new people that took out papers, so that's kind of nice. And mm -hmm. I guess a, a couple of them are going to be uh, unopposed. Uh, Silas's wife is unopposed. I thought, well, that was nice, that kind was of nice. just you know, <laughs> <laughs> just change places, you know, instead of Ava Perone. instead of me staying home and cooking dinner and cleaning the house, you know, Silas, you stay home and I'll go to the council meetings and you could stay home with the kids and cook. <laughs> you never things. tried it in your household. <laughs> <laughs> so they trade places, and then I think we got uh, the two in the first and. Uh, uh, the sixth, uh, Jeremy Decker. I don't know who that person is. But he's unopposed. But he's unopposed, but he took out papers. Isn't so that amazing? So you got some people running, not the volume uh -huh. that we yeah. had. Right. And, and maybe it's just kind of a lull, and, and then next year uh, there'll be a lot more. Yeah. I, think, I think part of it is when you look at <clears throat> some of those folks, the incumbents who aren't running, they're, they're, all, they're all relative, well, they're all new. Well, yeah, they're I mean, all new. Except That's for Kittleson. Right. Uh, and I think... And I think most of them have really stepped back and really didn't participate terribly much in some of the, the circus. I know that, um, I know Gene Kittleson didn't say much in that whole discussion of censure and non-censure and all that sort of thing and ethics investigations and kind of whatever it might be. Um, certainly Gene uh, Cuyunas didn't say much. I mean, except with the exception of Alderman Ryan who put himself on the front page with some pretty you know, less than diplomatic comments. I was surprised that there wasn't somebody coming out of that district um, given that episode. Mm. Not because he did anything wrong necessarily, but it was just simply a little bit of an embarrassment. Um, and I'm sure that when Bonnie Serta runs, there'll be, I would imagine there'll be someone. Well, uh, no, that's it. Um, yeah, she's she not is running. not running. Oh, she's not running. And she's in the sixth district. And she, that's not Bonnie, I'm sorry. Um, who am I, excuse me. Who is the woman who uh, made the Vicky Meyer. Oh, Vicky, Meyer. Vicky Meyer. Vicky Meyer, when Vicky, Vicky comes Meyer. up, excuse yeah. me, I'm sorry, not Bonnie. Sorry, Bonnie. Uh, Vicky, Vicky Meyer, I'm sure they'll, they'll, that particular contingent of aldermen will find someone in her district to run. There's well, no I'm question. sure Barbara Tyshinsky will run again. That could very well be. That could could well very be. well be. Yeah. Uh, Vicky Meyer beat Tyshinsky by not a huge right. amount of votes. It was a close race last time. Yeah, I relatively yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that I know goes. one individual was approached, uh, approached by uh, Alderman Hanna to run. And this individual was New Year's Eve night, so, you know, perhaps this individual <laughs> was just feeling the, the effects of the new year, but he, he, uh, he said he was going to run. Maybe he wasn't aware that there was filing deadlines and things that have to be done. And, they have to get and he may have missed it, but he signatures. said he was, a, he was approached by Alderman Hanna and Alderman Ryan hey, I went uh, to, to run. When I was first on the council, uh, I think it was the, what's the deadline? First Tuesday in mm -hmm. January. Yeah. I think we had a council meeting on mm -hmm. Monday. Went to the bar uh, with uh, Eddie Darko and Tim <laughs> Lorenz, and we were just shooting the breeze. And he said, I think I'll run for mayor. And I, I said, well, and we said, uh, yeah, we'll go to it. Next day, he got his signatures, had to turn them in, and he ran. Yeah. Uh, he got it, had one day, and he, and he ran. Who is this? Ed Darko. Ed Darko, okay. And he ran against Susha at the time. Yeah. Okay. 
but it just happens overnight. You go sure. out, have a drink. I'm, sure, I've been thinking about it. I'll run. Boom. Yeah, that's <laughs> usually what you need. If you've been thinking and mulling around in your head, somebody actually brings it up and, okay, you know, it's not just a loony idea I've got in my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually other people are thinking about it's it as well. Same way, yeah. 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 Another that's value true. of taverns, is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of great political work done in yeah. taverns yes. Yes. for a long, 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 long time. History. Yes. I'm sure Mitt Liquid Romney and Hillary Clinton wish they had spent a little more time in taverns recently. Well, but certainly not Mitt. In, <laughs> in any event, um, county board, uh, there are at least, um, as I understand, three districts where there are no candidates at all. Yeah. And, Which is uh, somewhat surprising. I think there, yeah. you'd think someone would have, particularly with retirements, they might have said to their neighbor at the tavern or someplace, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to run, maybe we ought to have somebody, you know, sort of cultivate somebody who is of like philosophy <clears throat> to take your place. At least that's you think you'd care enough to yeah, maybe yeah. look for somebody, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the, the impending, well, those four years off, declining the number of uh, board seats. You know, they're going to go from 35 down to 25, isn't it? Right, and yes. So yes. there are going to be some people who are going to just serve four years because they're going to be probably thrown in with someone else. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a deterrent as well. I don't know. Well, um, I know that we had spoken about it on an earlier show, but I mentioned the loss, in my view, of Bill Jens as county board, former county board chair and county board supervisor. Uh, and I would just reaffirm that loss because I think Bill was a fine, fine supervisor. Mm -hmm. But there are two people running for his seat, mm -hmm. so that'll be a contested race, which I thought was interesting. Um, Ken Conger, who I think did a fine job um, as the representative in the Kohler area, um, is, uh, is not running again. And Jeff Dickert, who is the um, superintendent of schools for the Kohler School District, is the only candidate. And so he'll be on the county board. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think that's an interesting concept. I, always, I guess I always think of superintendents being, of school districts being a little more apolitical uh, than that. But... Uh, uh, it'll or be as busy as heck that they can't fit in well, something. Do, do you like think that board. the fact that they have day meetings, they don't have night meetings, do they, the county board? <coughs> oh, yeah. I mean, well, the, the county, county board meets during the day, doesn't it? It does not anymore. Not that was, anymore? That was a big issue. Okay. But, in the, see, I don't even but know most that. meetings are still Many of the meetings. Many of the meetings are in the afternoon. Yeah, uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and that's for younger people who are working full time. Exactly. Uh, and if you're in the townships, uh, maybe you think, I'd like to run, but I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I think a whole lot of work in the county system does get done uh, in the committee um, context as mm -hmm. opposed to uh, in, in the meetings themselves. So I think that's a um, it's, a, it's a very mm -hmm. valid point, uh, but there was that one election cycle when people were angry about the county board meeting in the afternoon and mm -hmm. county board supervisors getting health insurance. And I can't tell you how many years ago that was. I don't really remember, but uh, I know there was a big turnover maybe 10, 15 years ago. So, um, so I, think yeah, I, that's, I think that's interesting. Um, school board, um, again, no <coughs> contested races. Gary Samet is uh, filing again. Uh, David Gallinetti for his third term. Maeve Quinn is retiring after th three <coughs> very fine terms. Uh, just one of the best school board members I think we've ever had. And she's been on for nine years. But a, a young woman who I don't, I have met, don't know very well, Jenny uh, Pothis, I think is the name, um, actually li lives in my neighborhood. Her children go to Grant School is going to be um, <coughs> Um, is going to be running for Maeve's spot, and it appears she's un uncontested. uncontested. Mm -hmm. So school board races really often are not contested. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, when I was first on the board, certainly things were more stirred up and, and there were more people running, but uh, I think people perceive the school board as being a huge amount of work. It is. And it is. A, it, is. <coughs> it is. And recently I think it's been perceived to be a workable body. You know, for a while there, we had that split between conservative and liberal thinkers, and I think there were people who said, you know, that's not how a board should be constituted. It should be for the benefit of the system yep. and kids and so on, and not philosophies and how you can advance your philosophy. So, and then the other thing is, we're talking about the board, is um, you have Jeff Squire uh, leaving early. I assume, I have, my understanding is he's taken another uh, job outside the community, um, and his seat is one of the two that are given to the 
outside of the city of Sheboygan. And so that the board will have to fill that vacancy and there I know Aliante, former principal who lives outside the city of Sheboygan, you have to be outside the city of Sheboygan again. He's uh, put in papers and I heard there are others but I've not heard names. Um, so the board's going to have a variety of them. Does the school board appoint then to fill right. the term? Right. That'll Correct. be on January 15th and I think five people have applied. Yes. Tim Ebenreiter. Uh, Tim Ebenreiter. Oh yeah, Tim oh. applied. Paula yeah. Klutzin, mm -hmm. Paul Ertl who I, yes. as I understand, used to be on the school board, and I just don't know the gentleman at all. And um, uh, Susan Hine, who's the wife of Dan Hine, who's the uh, chair of the uh, town oh. of Sheboygan. Mm -hmm. So and Paula so Kletzine would be a wife of a Sheboygan area school teacher, mm -hmm. which is interesting because I would assume she would have to abstain from any votes on contractual issues. Right, when, um, and that we've had a number of employees, or school board members whose wives are, um, well, Ron Rinfleisch's wife is an educational assistant, Dirk mm -hmm. Zileman's wife was a teacher, still is a teacher in the school district. Mm -hmm. I think there have been a couple of others. So yeah, they yeah. do not vote on those contracts. Okay. But that's about it, so. Um, no, the only Paul Ertl, is it Hurdle? H E R T E L? I think it's E R. E R. E -R. Okay. E -R. Then I don't know the. Then I don't. Know the but name. I could have that wrong. Okay. I know Paul Hurdle is with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Yeah, that's I, coming up. That's yeah. coming up next Tuesday or a week from Tuesday. Uh, January fifteenth. Fifteenth. So, so, so that's a fair amount of interest, and of course, it's always easier to get um, appointed. Yeah, you only have than, to campaign for with a few people. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and they've done it late enough in the cycle that you don't have to run right away. I think the cutoff date is November 1st, so if you are appointed after November 1st, you don't have to mm -hmm. run in the following April election, otherwise you do, so. Um, and so I, think there, <laughs> I think the timing of that wasn't accidental. I, that may be. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I that <laughs> the announcement from Mr. Squire and the uh, announcements were designed to make sure that that individual would have to run in spring. Since we're focusing on now, this. I can't prove that, but I hear tell. Well, there you go. I am um, uh, just focusing on the school district, which has a number of charter schools. And, I mean, it's really a big, a big push in the Sheboygan area school district. Uh, Court of Appeals recently uh, handed down a published decision about um, online charter schools. Uh, and I believe, does the Sheboygan area school district have an online? We have, starting this year, an online charter school. Um, I asked Ken to just talk a little no, bit about yeah, it. The online charter school in Sheboygan really primarily serves uh, really two groups of people. Um, one is students who are oftentimes expelled or suspended. I know the public often thinks that once we expel a student or suspend them, we wash our hands of them and they're, they're on their own as far as an education. And that's not the case. The district is always required to at least offer educational services to kids and parents. If they choose not to take them, that's certainly their choice in some respects. Although the district just so we don't have anybody yeah. up in arms, the district doesn't have to pay for those. Correct. And so, um, but in any event. And because they're off of our rolls, we don't receive any state monies for them either. So there's the, there's the balance there. Um, and we've created, a, uh, the district has created a charter school um, that's primarily geared at those kinds of students or students who uh, really prefer not to go to inside the four public walls of education. And there was a hope also that some of our homeschooled parents who don't want um, the, their students necessarily within a public school, traditional public school setting, would also come online. And we have about 27 students, I believe, something like that. In the online program? On the online program. Somewhere around 20 to 27, somewhere in there. It varies uh, all, uh, on and all, off. All uh, ages, all, all grades? Uh, primarily, right now, it's high school. It's okay. just high school, 9 through 12. Uh, and there are some plans to push it back into the middle school as, as this program gets, a, gets up and going. Okay. Uh, it's housed for people interested over at, at St. Clemens. There is a face-to-face -face component, in fact, um, for, for a lot of those things. So the students learn online, but uh, once a month they um, report back into a, a teacher who is uh, a Sheboygan Area licensed uh, teacher, an employee of the Sheboygan Area School District. Uh, to my knowledge, the last time I looked, uh, there's only one student who's not part of the Sheboygan Area School District area, someone outside that district who is in that program. Okay. 
which kind of leads you to the court's decision because the mm -hmm. court was looking at uh, Northern Ozaki County School District or something like that right. has an online charter school of several hundred, 600 students. Right. And uh, the court held that um, it violated three laws. They were, first of all, there wasn't substantial enough uh, supervision by teachers and there was more burden placed on parents to homeschool their students. And it's perfectly acceptable in Wisconsin to have homeschooling, but a district can't receive state, state taxpayers' state money, money and then allow parents to do the teaching, the substantial right. portion of the teaching. And also, it also violated the open enrollment law and the, uh, and the charter school law. Because charter schools are supposed to be accepting primarily, or almost always, districts, students within their own school districts. And this one substantially is not. And the employees, the teachers that are online working with these kids, is, are also not uh, Northern Ozaki mm -hmm. County teachers. I think this case is going to uh, hopefully resolve some of the questions that have been out there. When are aides paid? <laughs> Uh, what constitutes a teacher and yeah. student-teacher contact as well as the open enrollment question because when you're dealing with an online program it's quite substantially different from oh, yeah. the seat time and the hours and staff requirements that a regular school is under and do you make this a uh, cash cow for some districts who just want to uh, put something right. online because they have other budgetary problems or do you want to make sure that whatever is offered is, is ultimate in quality for the kids who are participating. Right. Well, I know it's easier for school districts, I think for school board members to actually vote to expel a student in the Sheboygan Area School District now because there is a charter school that will allow these kids who normally can't have anything to do with the school district to be enrolled in, in, a, in the charter mm -hmm. school, I think they call it the Success Academy. Right. And when I was on the school board, I always thought it was I mean, you'd have students who would do terrible things, so they could not be in the school district. But to cut them loose, to me, just seemed to be planting them in a Society criminal. Society do terrible, in a, more terrible things. Oh yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and you know, we our own homegrown criminals because these kids wouldn't even have the guidance of, of however little it might have been for them of a school system. Mm -hmm. And not to say that they should, I mean, there were times when the, the behavior was so bad and the safety of other students was, was really of paramount importance. But now you've got students who can do this online school yeah. and, and they're actually in a school building. Uh, and uh, I think it's a good second chance, but I, I don't know what impact this case will have on it. Oh, you're talking about the case. I was just one. I'm just. I'm just curious about can an online student, you know, a homeschool student, decides to go online instead of going to the school, can they participate in a school's activities, whether it's forensics, theater, sports? That's an interesting question. <laughs> that 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 is a really interesting question because uh, the district, our district, has created a variety of charter schools. I mean, and they're all as far as the, they're all equal in the eyes of the law, of course, they're all charter schools. Now in the case of Etude, uh, which is a, uh, oh, yeah. which is over housed in the same building over at St. Clement's at the moment, um, they, I'm told that those Etude students are allowed, they're half time at North and half time at South, and we have one or two students who do want to participate in interscholastic sports or forensics or debate or whatever, and they are allowed to go because they're half time at North and South, go back to North and go back to South and participate as if they were a full-time North or South student. But it really is, as a former coach, WIA, it's really more a WIAA issue because they have very strict rules uh, about uh, students participating in sports in a school where they're not a student. So it'll be okay. interesting to see if, and I don't know if the district has had those conversations with the WIA when it comes to face-to-face, uh, -face, which is one online charter component, and uh, the Success Academy, which is the other online charter component. Most, you know, typically in honesty, Tom, the kinds of students who are in those programs generally are not in the least bit interested in participating in interscholastic okay. activities. Yeah. But someday somebody will want to be in a musical or somebody yeah. will want to be in forensics or debate, not necessarily varsity football. And yeah. it'll be interesting to find out how that all happens. I think there's got to be an answer for that because I'm sure oh, that sure. issue has come up before. Just well, it's coming up in homeschooling. <clears throat> yeah, uh, that's. And in I'm many thinking. districts, have been school boards have been very benevolent in allowing them to come in for the simple reason that it it, it sort of bridges the 
maybe negative perception that some parents might have of a public mm -hmm. school. If the kid can come in and be in a play or take some type of activity in a public school, they might find out that the public school isn't the enemy that they might have <coughs> thought and their mm -hmm. kid is actually benefiting. And maybe somewhere down the line, the kid will then full-time enroll or part-time enroll in the school district and it'll be better, better for everybody. Right. Some years ago, um, I think it was St. Dominic's, or I think it was St. Dominic's, but it was one of the parochial schools, didn't have enough students to uh, I think it was basketball, and they were able to participate over at Urban. Uh, the understanding is these people, of course, play, pay taxes like everybody else, sure. and so they were able to work out uh, an arrangement where those students were able to participate in a... And, of course, you have Lutheran and Kohler here in the community. Mm -hmm. um, Sheboygan Lutheran and Kohler have combined to put enough guys on the field to have a football team. So mm -hmm. there are examples where... I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, um, that's a joint team, as I understand is it. Is that right? The, yeah. the city and the county should be able to work <laughs> together like that. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, Kohler, given the size of that school, school. Yeah. Um, yeah. just couldn't put a, a football team on the field. And, and I think Lutheran faced a similar situation. Situation, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I'm sure this matter will be appealed to the Supreme Court. And yeah. I think it is a likely case for the court to take because I think it certainly has yes. statewide importance. Which will set the stage for what the legislation should be to recodify how we handle these kids. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, I think for some students, online education is, is sort of the last best chance. I think it requires, though, a pretty disciplined student. Well, reading skills must be high. Exactly. Patience. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I think it's hard enough for college students to do it, uh, so I'm not quite sure I see how high school students, but at least for those expelled children, I think it's pretty important to have some connection to some sort of education. So we're going to swing back and the city. Happy New Year. We have a new fire department uh, ambulance service. Um, it appears that at least day one and two were okay. <laughs> and <laughs> well, yeah, I figured the fire department was going to do an a excellent job. They 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 do good work in anything they they uh, put them you know apply themselves to. But I just didn't think it belonged in the fire department. That's all. Right. But, so I know they're going to do a good job. Well, it'll be so interesting, and I'm sure it will be an issue in the next mayoral election. Um, and it may even be an issue in this aldermanic election, um, but uh, will the fire department make money? I mean, that was really yeah. the point of right. this, is the city needed the revenue, because otherwise you have the fire department needing to lay off firefighters because there just wasn't money for them. And so I think an honest look at the books will be... Uh, We'll be and how many people will actually dial the Orange Cross number who live in the city simply because philosophically they didn't approve of the switch? My view is if you're in a 911 situation, you better just call 911. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the number is out there. Well, we're wrapping up. It's 911 right now. Thank you for listening, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you again.